emphasize enough that the setup of these problems is probably the most important uh, part. And what I've always mentioned is when you set these things up, um, one thing you should do is identify important locations in this problem. So what's happening here is this block is starting, I'm just going to use the front corner of it to identify where it is, starting at this location from rest. So I'm going to call this location A. Uh, and then it slides down the block or slides down the ramp. And eventually at some point, it's just about to hit the spring. I'm going to call that location B, where it's just about to hit the spring. And then uh, it, it compresses the spring. And temporarily, the block comes to rest down here, which I'm going to call location C. So I'm, those are the three, I think, important locations that I would identify here. Um, another important thing that you should always do is identify where you want y to be equal to 0. That's because when you calculate gravitational potential energy, it has y coordinate right there in the equation. So you can choose anywhere you want to to be y equals zero. You just have to be consistent once you've made that choice. It does turn out, however, that some locations make your math work out a little bit more easily. Um, and sometimes that's just an instinct. Uh, lots of times I will choose the relaxed uh, location of the spring to be where y equals zero. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe maybe that's what I'll do here. So, so b is the location of the relaxed position of the spring. So I'm going to call that location right there uh, y equals zero. And, you know, we'll see how that helps. Might even want to change my mind as I get into this problem. Um, sometimes it's also helpful at each of these uh, lettered locations to write down what you know about the velocity of the object, the y-coordinate of the object, and how far the spring is compressed. And the reason I mention those three things is because those are the three types of energy we deal with. Speed is related to the object's kinetic energy, y-coordinate is related to the object's gravitational potential energy, and x is related to the object's elastic potential energy. So um, those are helpful to know at those locations, or at least to figure out what you know and what you don't know. So at A, it does say it starts from rest, so we know that the velocity is zero at A. Now the y-coordinate at A is unknown, and, and let me just point out what that looks like. So this right here would be the y-coordinate at A. This is uh, the y-coordinate at B, which we're saying is zero. This is the y-coordinate at A, and we, we don't know what that is, so that's a question. Now x at this location is essentially zero, or it's not even applicable because it's, this object isn't touching the spring. If an object's not touching the spring, then the elastic potential energy equation is not ap applicable at that location. Now, how about at B? At B, we don't know the velocity at B. We do know that the y-coordinate at B is zero because that's where we said it would be equal to zero. And here again, well, let's say x is zero. It's maybe just barely touching the spring, but the spring is uh, in its relaxed position at that location. Finally, at C, we know the velocity is zero. It does say somewhere up here it, it momentarily comes to rest. Um, we uh, don't know the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is a question mark. And finally, uh, x. Um, does it say it compress how far it compresses the spring? Yes. So x is equal to 5.5 centimeters, uh, which is equal to 0 0.055 meters. So that's good to know. And actually, I'm going to go back and reverse what I said about not knowing what the y-coordinate is. Let me just draw a dotted line here. So we're talking about what is the y-coordinate at C here. It turns out that we can figure this out from the information that's given. And this is one of the things that's tricky about this problem. What they told us is how far the spring compresses. And that's this distance right here. They told us that this compression distance, I'll draw it up here, is 5.5 centimeters. We can use that information to figure out what the y-coordinate is here what the difference is between this location and that location on the y-axis. And what I'm really, of course, drawing here is a triangle. Let me just redraw that triangle out here. So essentially we know that the hypotenuse is 5.5 centimeters, but we're interested in the y side of this triangle. And this is 30 degrees right here. 
So the relationship there, since this is opposite 30, would be a sine relationship. Sine of 30 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So using my calculator, I can figure out what y is equal to. So it uh, looks like I'm going to have 5.5 times the sine of 30, which is 2.75. So this side of that triangle is 2.75 centimeters. That means that this y coordinate here, rather than being unknown, is negative, I'm going to do this in meters, negative 0.0275 meters. I know that this is 0 0.0275 meters below zero there. So that's a good thing. We have this set up. We, we have our given information. And um, it's nice that we have a location like this one right here where we know everything. So that's one of my locations that I'm going to use. The other location I'm going to use is this one right here because that's kind of what we're looking for. In a way, we're looking for the y coordinate here. All right, anyway. Let me put this together. So I'm going to do this equation, WNC equals delta U plus delta K. Uh, WNC means work that's being done by non-conservative forces, things like friction, a person that's pushing. Um, gravity is a conservative force. A spring is a conservative force. Those are the only forces that are doing work on this object. There's no friction in this problem. There's no person pushing it. So there is zero work being done by non-conservative forces in this problem. Now, uh, change in potential energy. I'm going to compare C to A. You always do final minus initial. But so potential at C minus potential at A, and then the kinetic at C minus the kinetic at A. And let's see how that works out. OK. Now at C, it turns out that there are two different types of potential energy. And you have to take into account both of those. At C, there's definitely 1 half kx squared. Oh, hey, you know what? We don't know what k is. So I have to take a moment to figure out what k is. And that's why they gave us this initial information right here. The spring can be compressed 2 centimeters by a force of 270 newtons. So we have a force and a distance, which means we can use this equation, f equals kx. By the way, lots of times you see it written as f equals negative kx. Um, that negative sign messes people up. Let me explain why it's there. So let's use this information. The, uh, the, the spring can be compressed by a force of 270 newtons. So if we compress this thing, that means that the spring is going to push up on us, push the other way, with a force of 270 newtons. So the spring's going to push up the incline. I'm going to call that the positive direction. Uh, we're looking for k. Now x, which way are we pushing the spring? We're pushing the spring that way down the incline. We're pushing the spring down the incline, so I would consider that to be negative 0.055. So if we push down, the spring pushes up. You're always going to have your force and your x in the opposite direction of one another. If this one's positive, that one's going to be negative. If that one's negative, this one's going to be positive. And that's why we need the negative sign there to balance out the two sides of the equation. So when we calculate k here, it really is just going to be 270 divided by uh, 0.02. I wrote the wrong thing there. You probably noticed that. This is supposed to be 0.02. So 270 divided by 0.02 is uh, 13,500 newtons per meter. By the way, of course, I converted two centimeters into meters. Always have to have units of newtons and meters. OK, so back to our problem. I was calculating the potential energy at location C. So it's 1 half k, which is 13,500, we just found out, x, which is how far the spring is compressed, which is 0 0.055 squared. That is the elastic potential energy at C, but there's also gravitational potential energy at C, and we have to take into account both of those things. That's the mass, 12, times g, 9.8, times the y-coordinate, which is negative 0.0275 got to do both of those things. Total potential energy at C minus the total potential energy at A. Now there's no elastic potential energy there, so it's just going to be m times g, which is 9.8, times the y coordinate at A. That's an unknown. That's going to help us to find the answer to this question. So that is the potential energy at C minus the potential energy at A. The kinetic energy is easy. 
At C, it's momentarily at rest. At A, it starts from rest. So we don't even have to worry about that. So this is the equation that we have to solve. And um, let me take a moment to do that on my calculator. So 0 0.055 squared, 15,500, 5, 12. Sorry, I should have done this ahead of time. OK, and then I'm going to divide by 12, divide by 9. All right, if I did everything right, then I got a y coordinate at location A of 0.146 meters. If I did my math right, that's the answer that I got. That, however, is not the answer to the question. If you look carefully at the question, it says, how far does the block move down the incline from its rest position to this stopping point? What they want is this distance right here. They want that distance right there. So I already know that this part of the distance is 5.5. Now I have to figure out this part of the distance. And that's based on a triangle over here, a triangle that looks like this. I just found out this side of the triangle. Let me redraw this triangle down here. So I just found out, this is the zero of our y uh, axis. That's, this is right here. I just found out that the y coordinate at A is 0.146 meters. What I want to know is that over here, and this is a 30 degree angle. So again, I'm going to use sine. The sine of 30 is equal to opposite 0.146 divided by hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is going to be equal to 0.146 divided by the sine of 30. And that gives me 0.292. So this hypotenuse is 0.292 meters. So this distance right here is 0.292 meters. The answer to the question then is this distance plus that distance. That gives us the total distance the block moved down the incline from here to the stopping point. So the answer, I'm just going to add 0.055. The answer is 0.347. Okay, so the answer to question A is 0 0.347 meters. And while we're here, we might as well do B, which says, what is the speed of the block just as it touches the spring? So now we want to compare either B to C or A to B. It really doesn't matter. Um, I always find it good to compare um, two locations where we have known information. I calculated the information at A. Maybe I made a mistake. C is pretty much given information, so I'm going to compare B to C. So this is what my equation is going to look like. WNC equals change in U plus change in K. I'm going to do um, the potential at C minus the potential at B uh, plus the kinetic at C minus the kinetic at B. Still have a zero on that side. Um, the potential at C is the same exact thing as it was before. Probably should have just written down that number. So it was 1 half 13,500 times 0 0.055 squared plus 12 times 9.8 times negative 0 0.0275. That's the potential energy at C. Um, at B, the potential energy is zero because we're at a y coordinate of zero and the spring is in its relaxed position. So x equals zero. So that's just zero. Then we have the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy at C is zero, um, but we're interested in how fast the block is going at B. So I'm going to write this as one half the mass times the speed at B squared. And that's our unknown. So that's the equation that you would solve in order to figure out the speed at B. And just to save time on the video, I won't put that into my calculator. Uh, you can do that and get an answer, and that's how you would do that.